Allow me to introduce you to Adama. Atlanta is the Black Mecca. We know this already. We are home to people of African descent and the epicenter of arts and culture. But where can you go to experience Black art and culture, illuminating the depth and breadth of the African diaspora? Launched in March 2020 as a museum without walls, Adama quickly emerged as a space that is already engaged in communities around the world. The best part about being a founding member of Adama is knowing that I'm part of making history. By contributing to Adama, you're joining a global community of dreamers and builders. Bringing forth a world-class museum that highlights the Black global experience. And it's all happening here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right now. Right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Join us. Give. And get involved. Adama. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome all. Sorry about the late uh, uh, start to this uh, salon. My name is Fabian Williams. I'm going to be the moderator for this talk. A um, little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a future-minded visual and performance artist whose work explores things of Black liberation, innovation, and joy. Uh, Atlanta-based, but Fayetteville and Seaborn. Um, I employ a broad scope of materials, uh, commercial illustration, classic portraiture, hip hop, and civil rights iconography, 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 Jesus Christ, to directly confront issues of race and, and society's consumption and appropriation of every facet of black culture. Also joining me today is Courtney Brooks. Uh, Courtney Brooks is an Atlanta-based visual artist, instructor, and independent curator. Brooks rekindled her passion for painting by encouraging creativity and connecting communities through the arts. Through personal experiences, her love for art and building relationships have led to a journey of curating. She is the first woman of color curator in residence for art, uh, art, the Atlanta, art, for the, art on the Atlanta Beltline, where she will have the freedom to transform a public art space. And last but definitely not least, my homeboy, Maurice Evans, his creative focus was first realized through the lens of music, which I discovered not too a uh, few years ago. I had no idea that he played music. Born in Smyrna, Tennessee, his father was a military man, but also a gifted drummer and singer in a gospel choir. He introduced Maurice to guitar lessons at the age of four. And these lessons, along with his exposure to soul music, inspired his, his early creative growth. As his family settled in Georgia, Maurice began to draw more uh, upon his artistic instincts in high school. In 1986, he was accepted to the Art Institute of Atlanta, where he studied fashion illustration to intentionally advance his painting and drawing skills. And now he's here with us. Uh, welcome, panel. Um, this talk is about AI in the art world. And, uh, you know, I've been having a lot of conversations uh, with a lot of my friends and just ask questions about um, how they feel about artificial intelligence and its impact on uh, their practice. So I'd like to open up and uh, talk to you guys about how you guys are feeling. Uh, to start it off, how do you feel about artificial intelligence and how it's interacting with the art world? I'll go with you first, Courtney. <laughs> well, greetings. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, it's a it's a catch twenty two for me. It's mixed feelings. Like you know, I might be scrolling on IG and see an image, and I know it's AI generated, but I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> um, but for me personally, I haven't used any of the platforms to create it. It feels like you know this trend when people are using these like I want to say filters, but they're using these I. Um, AI generated images of themselves that makes me feel like ah uh, kind of cringy like I don't want to I don't want to do that um, but I see like why it's like a hot topic um, but as far as like using it myself and I I don't I don't see myself using it anytime soon or at all um, the art like I said it, they look cool from some of the images but my concern is like the history of it and or what it will do for the future because it's creating scenarios that's not real um and people might get that confused with real history and um yeah that's <laughs> that's like my first initial thoughts when it comes to it like I, I mean I give props to some of the artists that are 
creating like their ideas behind it, but it's like kind of soulless for me. Like, where's the spirit mm. um, in the actual pieces? Okay, uh, Marisa, uh, how do you how do you feel about uh, how AI is a uh, uh, enter into the art art scene? Mm, it did it did not enter very well because uh, it, it raised a lot of concerns with artists as far as the intellectual property because of the way that it gathers its information, it kind of scrubs the internet, looking for things that already exist to and to make. Uh, an interpretation of what your prompts are, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess where people have an issue with within in concerns of in intellectual property, where I uh, see the benefit of it is maybe being stuck on an idea and trying to flesh out my idea. Um, I can see you doing that. I can see it when it's used for more technical uh, arts, so maybe like architecture or something like that, you know. Um, uh, I can see it being used for, uh, so for example, let's say you have some photography and let's say you cut off your model's uh, hand, for example, right, in the composition mm -hmm. and tell it to finish the photograph it can generate the rest of the photograph for you now i think that's cool that's but it's from my work sort of you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. i see the use for it but i see problems with it as well big problem yeah i mean um as a person that you know prides myself on creating original works and like you know coming up with things that i feel like i receive you know when I'm in the process of creating my work, I am concerned about it just grabbing, you know, anybody's work that appears online and using it in someone else's creation to, you know, uh, to create new works. And my my biggest concern is when it it comes into uh, into business and corporate entities and how they tend to borrow from culture. And all it seems that AI does is pull from other people's intellectual property. Intellectual property, by the way, is a work or invention that is a result of creativity, such as a manuscript or design to which one has rights and for which one may apply for patent, copyright, trademarks, etc. Thus, anything that's made by humans um, is pretty much up for grabs at this point if it's if it's connected online. So. Uh, you know, that's a big concern because, you know, intellectual property is basically how artists make a living a lot of times. Uh, I believe uh, it was, I think, in a, a Grammy song nominated uh, by Drake, not by Drake, but like a, a Grammy song that's created with AI using Drake's voice or something like that uh, is being nominated for a Grammy. Yeah, so um, it's a... Uh, Definitely like a time for, I feel like, uh, maybe Congress, or, you know, should step in and start to draft some laws. Um, so, I mean, I'm glad we're, we're talking about intellectual property. That was my next question. It's like, what solution do you recommend to prevent uh, AI from using artist work unilaterally? You know, like, uh, you have any ideas on what to do? Any, any Anything you've read that maybe sounds like a good idea? Courtney? Um, for me, I I mean, AI is growing so it's growing faster than these laws can be passed. So, um, with that being said, it's like I don't I don't really have a solution for it right now. To be to be honest, I wouldn't know where to start with that because work being copied or you know you can be inspired by someone's work as just like your own human form of like being inspired to create, but as you are using these prompts to create other works, it's, is it really creating a whole new image? Even if it's quote unquote inspired by somebody else, like if it's creating something totally different, it's a certain percentage that even with copyright laws that create something new. So I don't know. Personally, I believe anything can be calculated to, <laughs> you know, create, you know, uh, a, a rate for, you know what the 
system where the AI borrows from another, you know, artist. Like there is a percentage of creative input that it receives from somebody else that can be generated into some sort of formula. I I personally believe. But mm-hmm. Maurice, uh, what do you? How do you? Uh, do you have any ideas on like what can be done to kind of like uh, compensate for the unsolicited borrowing of people's uh, creative, you know, input? See, I already have a problem with the word borrow. I think it's still stealing. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I don't think it's true. Borrow, borrowing, you know what I'm saying? It's not even stealing. Stealing is it's still. It's, I'm fine with stealing. You know, yeah, stealing I mean, is, a, is a better word to like, uh, you know, in light of like what's what's happening, because it is just taking other people's work and creating its own sort of lesser cool version of, you know. Yeah. So so but let's let's play devil's advocate a little uh, just a little bit. So like uh, um, it's not that we haven't been doing it before AI. Right. So mm-hmm. Courtney touched on inspiration. Right. So now what is inspiration exactly? Right. So for some people, inspiration is is doing just that. I look at something and I'm going to take a piece of that and do my own interpretation of it. Um, mm-hmm. If we go into uh, the arts like uh, like collage art. Right. Um, you're taking someone else's images a lot of times unless you're doing your own. So a lot of collage artists dig through magazines and books or other photographers' works to create a new piece of work. So now, you know what I'm saying? So it's not so uh, black and white. You understand what I'm saying? So we've been doing it. We're having a problem with the computer taking because the computer is not, I don't think a computer is being inspired. I think it is taking and it is combining. You see what I'm saying? Versus well, it's, it's following instruction, you know, like someone yes. is prompting it to, sure, it's you know, following instructions. Yes, but it's but it is it is. I think it is going to be intelligent enough to start to maybe create from its own experience, I guess, in some way, almost, you know, I think that'll happen eventually. Yeah, I mean, I believe. Uh, I mean, I personally believe it's already sentient. You no, know, there's like, you know, there's certain parameters that they say is uh, is gonna di- tell you when it's actually uh, sentient. When uh, what's it called? The event horizon happens. But I personally think it's already it's already thing. Um, but in terms of solutions, I've I've read about um, someone uh, pitching the idea of taxing it like up to ninety five percent. Um, and that money being gone, like like circulating back to the artists that have borrowed from. You gotta you gotta remember, like you know, this is not much different from sampling music. You know, they figured out a a formula for how much a sample costs. I think the same thing can be done. I mean, I don't think I know a sa- the same thing can be done for a uh, visual artist. It just has to be something that is, you know, asked the people that generate this stuff to do you know it it's doing all of this in the background it's taking a percentage of 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 resources from a certain type of artist and it's putting it into its mix to create like new content so it knows how much it's taking and it knows how much it's putting into this recipe for whatever image is creating so i just say like whatever that percentage is create a, a formula to um pay the artist that is borrowing from if it leads to money you know um but we could have a, a greater conversation about its purpose sometimes it seems like it's just to um decentralize creativity you know um i i can't help but think about working in the corporate environment and how cheap it would be to like get rid of the uh the creative department if you had like a machine that could generate content, website designs, etc., based on work that's done in the past. But uh, anyway. Um, well, quite. But would it be like because a human has to generate these prompts? So if you are not, if that person is not specifically putting in an artist's name, say 
I, I, for Prince, for example, like you have Prince behind you, so it's just like, hey, I want an image of Prince sitting on top of a, a mountain range with a sunset in the background. How do we, you know, how do we know where they're pulling it from? Like, because it looks like a lot of the work looks a little bit like surrealism. A lot of the images, you know, it's probably pulling from Dolly or whatever, the masters, but unless you're actually putting in the artist's name, how do we know, really know that where they're pulling the work from? And how do we tax that? Like, how will we be able to... Well, that's what I mean. Like, it knows who it's referencing. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I, I started recently using Photoshop's AI um, prompt to extend parts of scenes um, that I'm creating. So I noticed that the images that it, it extends the work from are like just bits and pieces from other images that is pulled from the internet. And right now, Photoshop's reference pool is not that great because it just started. It hasn't been around like uh, Dolly or Mid Journey. So Mid Journey is a, has a bigger database because people have been using it for a couple of years now. And so when it like generates images, it has it has a larger pool to pull from. Photoshop is just getting started, but Photoshop is the the app that is used by most digital creatives. So as we engage with Photoshop, and we probably you know, um, selected some like, okay, you know, everything that's created in Photoshop now is subject to be graphed into the AI, you know, input. So whatever you make in Photoshop right now is subject to being pulled into this database of creative content that it can pull from, you know, and like, it gets tricky because like when, you know, people are using these, uh, this AI filter in corporate campaigns, you know, if it's pulling from somebody that just used the app, you know, do, like, will will money be given to the person that is sampling? Because really, it's just like, just like a music, a song is sampling someone else's work. So I, I didn't, I really just didn't foresee us coming to this stage in technology this soon. I just feel like we got here really fast. And like Courtney was saying, we just um, the laws and the barriers haven't caught up to the technology. And I don't at this point, I'm not sure it will. And so my bigger question is like, uh, you know, are there any business or tax incentives that could be generated from you using an artist's work? Um, is there some sort of like, you know, money pot that you could put into that serves as a you know, an exchange for the disruption that's going to cause uh, the industry, the, the the visual arts industry. See, see, I mean, you're bringing up taxing. So uh, unlike mm -hmm. the music business, this set up for what you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So art is not set up that way. So you have to, uh, a lot of times artists are uh, using reference for their work. So when now you're going to, uh, tax this AI that is sampling for my work, but it doesn't know where I got my reference from. So who, how are we going to set the provenance of where this actually started from? You know what I'm saying? So those mm -hmm. are going to be some of the problems that you're going to have with that, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's one thing if I'm creating work and I'm using my own reference that I created or I'm coming straight from my dome and then AI comes and uses it. But it's a different thing if I've used reference that is art that belongs to someone else because photography is art right right so you know that's that's some of the problems i see with that how do you do it now if we go back into the nft space where um artists were actually able to establish a provenance digitally maybe maybe you can use something like that right mm -hmm. um, Cause that's what you love to me. That's, that was the exciting part about NFTs is because it, 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 it could keep a record of where this thing started, who bought it, who sold it, who bought it again, so forth and so on. And it was always in this digital space. We could always recall it. So that's like setting up a provenance, but how do you do that if you don't do it that way? Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, you bring up a good point about NFTs and uh, the blockchain 
they definitely there is definitely a way to keep track of all this stuff like i don't i really don't feel like we're in a in a space now where data is lost anymore i think everything is being backed up and every there's a track record for every little thing now if someone if 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 it benefits a certain entity to like erase that data lose track of it, that's another thing but um it definitely can be tracked you know digitally as to where it's pulling this references from like you know so uh, i don't think that's the problem i think the problem is the will upon law um uh, uh, corporations and just in general people that hold the power um and you know we hold power too as artists so the i think the issue is is like you know combining voices and and uh and letting whoever it is that's benefiting from this technology let them know that this is just it can't work you know without us being um considered in the the process i mean we have to we have to be included now i think the question is like how do you install yourself in this this development because at this point from what i'm reading a lot of the people that developed ai technology don't even know how it it, it functions or why it does what it does so I'm starting to feel like we're we're like looking at a runaway train. Yeah, it's uh, it's the wild wild west with it because the connection is lost, and so it's going to be constantly shifting um, in the future. So it's just like, how can you really control it? Like, it makes mistakes just how humans make mistakes. Like you can see in some of the images, like they don't they haven't pr quite figured out how to get the hands right. Right. And sometimes that's artists struggle with painting hands or drawing hands. So it's just like even the mistakes that we have creating work, it's the, the tool or is AI like the new medium of creating and they're still making it's still making mistakes and learning itself. So it, there's no way to really control it because it's only going to advance more once it gets. Well, it's better. actually it's actually figured out how to like oh yeah oh okay yeah <laughs> i mean when it first came out yeah. like oh, okay yeah yeah that was that was that was the that was used to be the thing that used to give it away i mean it's still like it's still like it's stylistically still noticeable but it is getting better and better and better at mimicking you know photography you know illustration is getting better it's getting yeah. and getting better really fast so um I, I do believe soon we won't be able to tell, you know, fiction from reality. And it's already dangerous right now. Like, I feel like we're in the age of disinformation. Um, but knowing this, you know, playing, Maurice, you talked about playing the devil's advocate. And I know, Courtney, you said you haven't engaged with it in your practice yet. Um, but Maurice, have you, like, uh, been playing around with the the AI as a, as a tool in your work? So, no. So just out of curiosity, I wanted to see what it could do. I was uh, using it in uh, Photoshop just to see if it could do simple things like that I find super annoying, like taking out backgrounds, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've used it for that. I've used it to generate, like I said, you know, um, using a, 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 a photograph that I, I shot and see if it could generate more to that photograph. I've done that. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, but I haven't incorporated it into my work. I'm not interested in that. Not for for me, right? I, I see the uses for it, but I think another thing that's uh, a little dangerous about it is, so think about, uh, see, I'm old enough to remember when you had to remember people's phone numbers, right? Me too. And so now... Yeah. I don't remember anybody's. It's it's only a few people's numbers that I remember right now, right? Yeah, me too. That's, that's because of technology, right? So mm -hmm. it, it 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 made it where we didn't have to use certain parts of our brain, and so now we don't know how to use it anymore, right? So so think about it this way: so now you're a young artist, and you're trying to come up with something to paint, right, or a new idea, and you can't figure out anything, which is part of the process, keep in mind, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't figure out anything. So now you're gonna go to this AI and start putting in prompts and it's gonna generate something for you. So now you have, you're eventually gonna lose 
the ability for problem solving, which is part of creativity, right? So now, because you're not using it, eventually you're not creative anymore. You are relying on this tool to create something for you. So to me, that is more of the danger of it is you're going to become lazy. And because you don't use that part of your brain anymore, it is you're going to lose it because you always heard, you hear the, you hear people say use it or lose it all the time, right? Mm -hmm. it's true. If you don't use something, you will lose it. So to me, that is that is the dangerous part in this technology right now. Yeah, because you don't know what it's it's imaginable. Like it's kind of like a Frankenstein. Like it's gonna eventually become a monster. Like you're putting all these pieces together and. You don't know what's going to come from it, honestly. You just said the key word. You won't be able to imagine. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. I mean, that brings me to my next question: uh, Is AI the next big tool, or or the tool for devaluing artist creativity? Is it turning us into a tool? You know, like are we just a tool to give it inspiration so it can eventually just become, you know, artist, uh, you know, a supreme artist itself, and just generate you know, ideas for the user as we used to do. Um, I remember when, you know, it it first, like Mid Journey first came out and people was like, it'll never be able to like, you know, generate, you know, a true artist work. True artist work has like, you know, the human quality a lot, a lot. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not so sure anymore. You know, I think, I think it's going to be able to mimic us just fine. And, um, you know, it, it is it is just as empty as someone that steals somebody else's work, right? You know, it can be just as empty. But understanding the human condition is not impossible, I don't believe. So it will be able to mimic, you know, what we what we um hold dear i feel like it's already manipulating us on what we desire i feel like that's why social media creates so much conflict and how we we are so distracted with just everyday life because that's the point the point is to be overstimulated and over distracted i feel like it already knows us and that the creative part of it is just only catching up because it just hasn't gotten to that that chapter yet in writing our our new direction so um I, yeah touch on a little bit of what you just said so you're you're asking is it going to devalue uh artists so uh, mm -hmm. i think i think it is going to do both i think it will devalue some who uh lack creativity and things like that and it will make people who are real artists more valuable right because mm -hmm. part of what you like about art is uh the uniqueness of it that it is hard to duplicate right so uh there's just like you know everybody has their own touches on how they create art you see what i'm saying or their own eye so your what you do is very unique to you right that's that's what people like about it right so mm -hmm. eventually, if the machines can do everything if you actually uh, well part of it is people are fascinated with a human's ability right mm -hmm. that's that's another part of it we're always fascinated because like wow i didn't know a, a human could be that good right so that's mm -hmm. part of the value of it right so just imagine mm -hmm. one day we turn on uh the, the television on sunday morning and uh it's two football teams and it's just uh, uh robots playing each other and they're doing these incredible things eventually we're going to use interest in it right because what we find it, and fascinating is a human did that a human jumped that high a human was able to catch that ball with one hand fall and, and still hold it that's what you're fascinated by that's the value of it right but mm -hmm. so I, I don't think it's going to necessarily devalue you know what I'm saying? If you are a person who, if you're a collector and you want something unique, mm -hmm. you're still going to want that human element in it. Okay. Courtney, what do you think? I, I mean, I agree. I mean, as a curator, I'm, I I haven't put this in any of like my like 
proposals or anything, but if you're future reference, I probably wouldn't really accept any AI work um, because it is about the craftsmanship and the story and the narrative behind the work and the actual putting the hands to the piece. Because, I mean, I don't see any AI doing installation work or your, your sculptures yet. Like, I mean, yet, I mean yet, 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 <laughs> yet. <laughs> but there is, like I said, there's a spirit behind the actual human creation. And so, mm -hmm. um, and we're all, and there's different types of artists. There's, you know, an artist can be, to, to, can paint from observation versus an artist or painter using a photo reference. So it's just like, there's different ways to create this work. Um, so I don't think you can de devalue uh, an artist's work through, I don't think AI can completely devalue a, an artist's work. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's okay, always so, gonna be a love for it. There's always gonna, you wanna have tangible things that you know that someone created. I think it's, it goes two ways. I think I think the, the success of the artist is also gonna be a reflection of the consumer. And if the consumer is taught to appreciate artificial things, then definitely in the next, you know, the next generation may not necessarily feel like they need, you know, uh, a human's creative touch on things. You know, it really depends on where society goes and who determines what the cultural value of things is. Like, you know, I've been saying this for a while, you know, artists control culture, culture controls people. So if, the artist continues to narrate the culture, then people will reject AI art and will, will reject artificial creations based on computers because they're going to be looking for, you know, things that are emotive and resonate because that's part of the human experience. But if they follow the lead of, you know, a sort of digital perspective, in culture and we cease being the tastemakers and and artificial intelligence becomes like the tastemaker then people are totally going to like uh buy into the idea of, of computer art being you know just as valuable as as human art and when I, I feel like we're already seeing it in the art world you know what i'm saying like you know i've seen pieces entered in some of these fairs as like ai art as a piece that's being pushed for you know a retarded amount of money this already started yeah so um you know i think it's going to be upon artists to set the tone and it's going to have to be we have to get a little uh, a little bit more intentional about you know making that case and really talking to people about you know what's valuable um because if not you know what i'm saying like you know plan your future or your future will be planned for you speaking of which where do you see AI in the next five years? Hmm. My daughter's over there, like looking at me, like <laughs> <laughs> she want to say something. But <laughs> it's going—it's going to be—it's going to be, it's gonna be uh, uh, beyond our imagination. It's going to be able to do things that we didn't think it would be able to do. I mm -hmm. mean, that's that's what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't feel threatened by it necessarily. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I do think you are partially right. I think uh have a tendency to dumb society down and it will accept things aren't that aren't as good, right? So mm -hmm. I've seen that we saw that happen with MP3s. MP MP3 right. terrible, right? But if you don't have a certain kind of listening ear, you can't tell the difference, right? And so mm -hmm. So the same thing can happen in, in art. So you can dumb the people down where they'll accept less and they don't understand the energy that comes off of a painting that was done by an artist. So mm -hmm. I think things can happen. So yes, you're right. So what are you gonna do as an artist? You know, are you gonna put more into your work or you gonna or what are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. I think it's, and it also has to be the motivation behind the work, because if you're an artist and you're, you decide to go the AI route to help you, you know, flesh out ideas or brainstorm, or you put an image in and then you just take that image and say, I'm going to hand paint this on my own style. Like I, it's, it's, it's really the motivation behind the work. And if you were going to, if it's going to be used for good or bad. Right. And so, right. um, but as far as like, even just social media, like, or, 
people or photographers are taking these AI images and creating new people is given the false interpretation of what a woman looks like or what somebody looks like. Mm. You know, catfished. It's like there's even a model that I think her name is Shadu. It's not even a real model. It was an AI model. That's mm -hmm. that there was a whole controversy in this black model created by a white man that's mm -hmm. getting booked for all these magazines, right? So it's just mm -hmm. like this is not even a real. Even like I went to the Instagram page mm. and the captions is speaking as a robot, like she's speaking as a real person, and people are commenting like this person's real. So it's like, are we being desensitized by these images? And so that's like yes. the fear of the future, like. We're not not so the children growing up, they're not gonna know the difference. And like so when I think I feel for illustrators who do children's books because are we are the new feature of children's books only gonna be AI work mm. and not the process of actually hand sketching and like the you know, the actual work that goes behind creating images. Well, I I was like, saying would, would writers oh, be even, oh. I'm sorry. Will writers okay. even have to, will writers even have to hire illustrator? They can just do AI. So that puts so if that's in jeopardy, you know, if we think about jobs being replaced with AI, like that's what I right. think. Right. Then that loops back to intellectual property. You know, right. like if you're going to not hire illustrators because AI can do it, AI didn't make that up. You know, AI pulled yeah. from a pool of, you know, whatever's on the internet and created a style based on that. Now, will it be able to like generate completely original content? Possibly. You know, I do feel like it, AI is just a reflection of its creator and who created it, you know, who is leading the charge in creative AI and it don't, it's mostly not people that look like us. And speaking of which, um, and this, this question was posed by Kimberly Benz. Hey, Kim. Um, how do you feel like AI is interacting with black culture, black art culture? Um, I'm seeing a lot of um, images being, you know, put out on Instagram or just like you'll see um, black models in if they were in punk rock phase or I seen a post where there, I don't know if it was like supposed to be in Brooklyn, but they had like um, gardens going down the side of the building of like i don't know so it's like it was like oh this is a cool image and but we know it's not real so it's just like we putting black people on these stages in, the, in like in a better space of like black joy and like what could be possible so it's just like yeah i can feel that can be inspirational in a sense if it's created by a black artist to put us in a better you know to imagine like a afrofuturism type space maybe mm -hmm. um i can see that being a good well good thing if it's created by a black artist However, mm -hmm. I mean, if it's, if it's solution based to make something better or see us in a better light, um, or you know, just to have a, the imagine, uh, the imagination of having something better. But if it's anybody that's not <laughs> of African descent creating these images, then that's where the problem lies. And because it's like culture vultures taking us to make money that they've, they've, they've always been doing, but now with AI, it's just gonna be like supercharged, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maurice? I don't know. I agree with everything she just said. I think it's gonna I think it's gonna be a tool that's gonna be easier to perform our culture. You know, it's gonna make mm -hmm. it a lot easier. Um, you know, you're not gonna feel the need to have to go to uh, a black person because they understand or they have a certain kind of energy because of the culture and their experiences. You're just gonna you know just gonna steal it, just gonna have the computer gener generate something. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I see. I do see the danger in it. Um, but you know, people have always stole, st you know, stolen from us anyway. You know what I'm saying? True. It's, Same as with other boys. Not new. It's just a, a a new technology to do it. You know. Yeah. Um. I had a thought, and I feel like it just left me. Oh yeah. Okay. So one of the, one of the uh, one of the gigs I had like. A couple months ago was uh I, I was asked to paint the dean of computing at georgia tech charles isbell and um i actually posted his the image like uh a few months back that i painted and so one of the one of the things 
that we talked about when I was actually just getting to know him was some of the work he's doing with AI. And he is working on it from a, a point of adding the references to black culture because uh, he had concerns about, you know, he was working on this app that increased the resolution, the image resolution of, of an image that would be low res, right? So he had this low res image of himself and he puts it in this program that's supposed to like increase the resolution of this this poorly bitmap image of himself. And what it did was it turned him into a white man. <laughs> 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 and uh, it, it, just, it looked like him, but it just looked like a white man. And that is because the people that are programming it are, you know, so in, hey, in that case, hey, say it, say hey, it. white man, white men, yes, yeah, white men strikes it. again. So, yeah. so, the, so the thing is, is like, are we, are we really just watching, you know, a hyper, like, like I'm, I'm over here, like, you know, thinking about like, is it like hyper white supremacy? You know what I'm saying? Like, is it just really just amplifying the, the mental sort of, of projection of how white men view the world in the digital space? Uh, and does that mean, is it gonna, is it gonna rewrite history again? Is it gonna reimagine, you know, uh, you know, the, you know, our image and the image of, of himself, you know? I mean, we saw what happened when AI got loose on, on Twitter. And like within what, like a couple hours, it was like just giving neo-Nazi posts and it was soaking up the, the likes and the comments because it's really just training itself to respond to the data in front of it. And like it goes after, you know, what's going to like make the objective um, possible. And it doesn't think like us. It doesn't observe our, you know, our rules or, or, or our morality. Or any of that it's just like you know you said you want this and this is what you're gonna get you know and if everything skews towards white men then that's what it's gonna do it's just gonna like it's just gonna give you more of that so and in this case it's like it's, it's a runaway train so do we pull our creativity into it to make it more balanced you know or do we just do we get out the way you know I'm kind of like kind of dealing with like a sort of um, conflict in that, whereas I'm trying to figure out how do I interact with this technology that I have major reservations for, for a lot of the good reasons, you know, you know, some of them have to do with sci-fi things I've seen in sci-fi. Some of it is the, is me seeing where it's going and how it's affecting us, you know, still can't identify us digitally, you know, you know, when it comes to facial recognition, it's like the black men are just like all the same. Any bald headed person will do. <laughs> In my case, me and Maurice, we screwed. You know what I'm saying? In the lineup. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Courtney, you know, you got dimples and a killer two states away got dimples. You're screwed. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, we're not being we're not included in this conversation, but the conversation is going to it's going to be about us. You know, we, we have gaping vulnerabilities when it comes to our creativity. We ain't never really been protected for that. You know what I mean? Hello, Elvis. So what what do we do? You know, and I'm sure we can't necessarily uh, answer these questions right now. Do we have any? Oh, wait, we got an uh, audience question. Who do you think has to advocate for this to change faster to ensure AI doesn't do more chaos? Great question. That's what, I guess that's what I was leading into. Like, what? Who? Who do we turn to? Who do we run to? Who do we run to? I don't know. This. I mean, there's been people. Part of the architects of it are already complaining about it. We talked. About they don't. It. Yes. We yes. A lot. The day, they are already. They are already mm -hmm. complaining about. It. They are already warning us. Uh, what? What's the possibility that this is going to do? So I don't know who we need to go to in particular. But there are people actually doing it already, you know. I mean, the CEO of OpenAI got fired and then rehired right yesterday, right? Yeah, I don't know. 
I mean, I just read that this morning. He got fired. I didn't read why he got fired, you know, but I don't know. Like we, it's like, we should be able to turn to lawmakers. You know, we should be able to turn to the people that are generating this technology. Elon Musk and the, you know, the, uh, uh, who's the dude that runs Amazon. But, but let me say something too. Let me say something. So, mm-hmm. so some of this, uh, especially when it comes to AI not recognizing us as people of color or black people. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it's not always sinister. You know, white people aren't thinking about us. They're not, it's just not, this is not, part, we're not part of their lives like that. They don't have to think about us. It. So it's, it's not always sinister, right? So, but I do think we need more black programmers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We need more black people in the tech space. We need to create our own platforms. We need to create our own software. You know what I'm saying? Instead yep. of dealing with their and their software and the ramifications of their software, we need to create our own stuff. Sound like you said we should turn to ourselves. I guess I am saying that, huh? You know, uh, I mean, honestly, the thing that has plagued black people, I feel like ever since we've been introduced to the Western idea of civilization is our unity. You know, like uh, we got a lot of problems and our problems are creative ones. It's really like it's, it, our, our, our biggest gift is creativity. Our biggest problem is a creative one. We just can't seem to collaborate. And we can't seem to collaborate because, again, the people that benefit from this chaos in society know that. And, you know, chaos and division is introduced. And I feel like social media is the best platform to confuse and divide people. Name a problem that's been solved through social media. Name one. It don't exist. You know, I don't, I don't. Okay. So we can, we can talk of it in terms of communication, right? So mm-hmm. the whole world during the pandemic is, is uh, protesting because of the outreach of technology. You know, that I don't think that happens before that. You know what I'm saying? Now that, mm-hmm. you know, the world doing that is all at the same time, like it did, you know, uh, I think that is technology. I think that is social media. They're able to get the, information out there and sometimes unfiltered. I think it was real good at keeping us angry. You know, it, it, it did get uh, uh Derek Derek it, it did get Derek Chauvin locked up. You know, it, it got uh Ahmaud Arbery's killers got, you know, but it didn't help the women in Iran too tough. And it's not stopping the Palestinians from getting murdered. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's it's like it's making us aware. But at the same time, uh, it's not necessarily solving, not, not any permanent solutions. I think it's temporary advancements and then like 12 steps back. And then it's like, oh man, like I'm mad as hell. So what do we do? I'm going to post. I mean, it's kind of like what David Spell said. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, hashtag, I'm mad. Right. And <laughs> man, we'll get in. You know what I'm saying? Like, and the guys that created it at Google and OpenAI, like they keep saying stuff like, maybe we should stop. We should probably stop. Everybody should stop. But it's like, but that's not good business. You know, like the advantage is going to go to the person that, that hits the, you know, creates the best solution using AI or creates the, the better version of AI first. And the same goes for warfare and so on. Um, we're in a pickle, man. Like, I do believe black people need to really get on the cutting edge of it you know um but i also believe that you're not gonna uh just uh, you're not gonna uh get out of uh the situation using what got you in it either i think you may have to like counter with something different and i'm not sure what that is but we should talk about it and probably not online. You know what I mean? <laughs> Cause Skynet is listening. Yeah. Uh, we have any more, I think we got like one more question to see. Oh. 
No, but so left field did say, I mean, it's about influence and capitalism. Like, social media does fall into that category. Like, (laughs) it's all about influencers and people trying to go viral to make a quick buck, to be famous and to have more money at the end of the day. Um, Right. There is positive, you know, there is positivity. There are, you know, things that can, but it is a tool. It's how you use it and what you consume and how your algorithm is is placed on your on your page um but as far as the ai it it is going to take us to create the images that we want to see or have that's going to be a more positive like it's up to us just like it's up to parents if you want your kid to learn how to read cursive you got to teach them cursive and they're not learning that in school you know what i'm saying so it's like we have to be a village and like do our do our own due diligence to make something better for the future, you know, um, mm-hmm. or the AI. Um, and, you know, it just makes me think of like stock photos. It's just like, there's not a lot of black, you can't just type in, I want a black such, such and such, because that photo may not be, may not exist. So we have to create those images. And so maybe that, you know, AI can help with that tool of like creating those images. Um, so that necessarily doesn't mean that's stealing from somebody else, but. Well, it can't do it if it doesn't exist already. You know, so it's like you're right back where you started. Uh, um, <laughs> Marius, <laughs> Marius, let me give you the last word because uh, Q and A is closed. So, any last thoughts? Hmm, I don't, I don't know what my last thoughts are. Uh, it, it does sound like we don't have a, a solution for this problem that is that we know is a problem. I do mm-hmm. know that artists are going to create. Nothing, nothing is going to stop that. You know what I'm saying? You're going to do that regardless of what's happening. You're going to create. So that will be my one of my words of advice for artists is to create, you know, keep creating, you know, uh, don't rely on tools that are going to make you creatively lazy. So I, I would say that. OK, well, my last uh, thoughts uh, uh, before we dip out. Courtney, do you have any last words no, for? I, no, I agree. I don't, okay. don't, don't become lazy. <laughs> I believe I believe that if anybody needs to create an AI uh, entity, it needs to be black women. Mm-hmm. And that is because civilization started with y'all. And uh, I think that the transition to the next phase needs to be brought in by black women because um the way black women move it's just different and you know we need the emotional intelligence um to be put into this this new entity that's coming and i feel like that and maybe like maybe ai needs to talk to nature too because i feel like nature is the original artificial intelligence. I don't even feel it's like it's not, it's not artificial, it's natural, natural intelligence. So I feel like those inputs need to be added in. But at the same time, if it if there's natural intelligence, that might be the end of us because we are destroying the planet. So anyway, that's my um that's my input. Guys, I I, I love this conversation. Of, of course we need to have uh more like this. Uh, thank you uh Adama for providing the platform. Thank you Courtney Brooks. And Marius Evans and uh, Kimberly Benz for like bringing us together. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, stay tuned for more content from Adama, ATL, Yale. Peace. Thank you.